The flipped method of teaching has its advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about what you can do to ensure success in your classroom. Let's start with what it means to flip your classroom. The flipped learning network says that flipped learning occurs when direct instruction is moved from the group teaching space to the individual learning environment. This method of teaching flips a traditional classroom's use of lecture and homework. Students typically watch a short video that explains the content at home. They then use classroom time to interact with the content while the teacher is there to support them. Jonathan Bergman was one of the founders of the Flipped Learning Network and is considered one of the pioneers of the flipped class movement. In an interview with the Washington Post in 2012, he stated that students in the traditional classroom would often give up on homework or cheat when they didn't understand it. The flipped model gives these students teacher support as they interact with new knowledge. There are three major shifts involved when moving from a traditional to a flipped classroom. A teacher-centered classroom becomes a student-centered classroom. Students are taking more responsibility for their learning in the flipped classroom. Passive learners are becoming active learners. They actively engage in their learning. Instead of telling my students the diet of an owl during our flow of energy unit, they discovered it on their own as they dissected owl pellets and attempted to identify the skeletons they found. Low level thinking moves to higher level thinking. Class time focuses on applying, analyzing, and creating instead of listening to a lecture or reading from a textbook. Now that you know a little bit about the flipped classroom, do you think it would work with your students? There are several things to think about, including the amount of time it takes to plan for this type of classroom. You can't decide to flip your classroom overnight. There is a large amount of pre-planning that is involved. You must also be flexible because things don't always go the way you expect them to. You must also be a multitasker as you manage student groups that are completing different activities at different times. I often describe my classroom as organized chaos. Another consideration is the availability of technology for your students at home and at school. Do you have computers in your classroom or have a BYOD policy on your campus? One of the criticisms of the flipped method is the use of the videos. This model is about more than the videos. Success or failure starts with the teacher and what is happening during class time. The interaction among students with each other and the teacher is important. You must communicate your expectations and objectives to both parents and students. They need to know why you have chosen this model. This may not be the best method for all teachers, students, and classrooms, but you can put yourself on the road to success by planning for potential roadblocks. I flipped my 6th grade science classroom last year and plan to flip my 7th grade science classroom next year. My assistant principal and I were discussing this the other day, and he played devil's advocate to see if I had really thought this through. One of the questions he asked me was, what will I do for students that can't learn from the videos or don't watch the videos at all? After assigning a video for my classes, students usually come back to class fitting in one of three groups. They watched the video and understood it. They watched it but didn't fully understand or connect with it. Or they didn't watch it at all. If students didn't watch the video, then that's the first thing they do, either on their own device computers in my classroom, or on my projection screen. 
When students come back to class after watching a video, I have a comprehension activity to gauge understanding. This can look differently each time, but usually students answer a few questions about the content of the video. If they show understanding, then they move on to an inquiry activity where they are applying their learning. If they don't understand it, then I pull them in small groups and I help them create those connections they need for understanding. Another potential roadblock is assessment. Assessment doesn't have to change a great deal from a traditional to a flipped setting. You can still use a variety of formative and summative assessments. In my science classroom, I still have quizzes and tests, as well as lab analysis and conclusions. But I also include more open-ended projects to show student learning. Crystal Kirch is a high school math teacher in California and uses a variety of tools for assessment. She uses things called WISCs and student success sheets. She has her own website found at flippingwithkirch.blogspot.com. On her site, she has a variety of resources that explains the process. First, I'm going to show you WISCing. She uses this with her videos, and it stands for Watch Summary Question. So students are actually processing, they have accountability, and it helps create discussion as they watch the videos. If you go to her Frequently Asked Questions, it shows you a variety of topics, including the student success sheets, the WISCs, and how do you manage concept quizzes and tests. So it discusses how she assesses her students. Another great resource is Jonathan Bergman. He uses tests in his classroom, but also alternative assessment. They require students to pass the summative assessments with 75%, but they also included alternative assessments to show student understanding. I will include the link to both of these pages at the end of my presentation. Todd Nesloni is a fifth grade teacher in Waller, Texas, and has had great success with his flipped classroom. I asked Todd what he found to be the most difficult aspect of flipping his class. He told me that changing education mindsets from traditional model of teaching to the flipped model was his greatest challenge. One way he has addressed this problem is through communication. You must address the change. On his website, he has a parent letter and video that explains what he's doing and what he hopes to accomplish. His website can be found at toddnesloney.com. When you get to his page, if you click on the flipped classroom and scroll down, you will see the flipped class parent letter and the explanation letter. It is important to communicate with students and parents that this is a way for you to meet all student needs and that you are dedicated to each and every child's success. Another question that often comes up is roadblock number four. How do students know what to do during class? I asked Leah Beck, an eighth grade math teacher on my campus, how she structures her daily class time. She gives her students packets that guide them through the process. She mentioned that the use of the word packet tends to have a negative connotation in education, but it really shouldn't. The packet contains important notes, activity directions, and a calendar with due dates. It clearly outlines the students' expectations. Kirch also uses a similar method with her student success sheets. If you go back to the the Frequently Asked Questions and click on the SSS Student Success Sheet. And then you can click on one of two examples. So it has important reminders. It tells them where to find support. And it gives them the concepts that they'll be learning, the different assignments and practice, extra help as well as some of the actual activities that they'll be doing. If you think you are interested in flipping your classroom, 
make sure to give yourself plenty of planning time. Do your research and ask questions. A great way to find teachers that flip their classrooms is on Twitter by using the hashtag FlipClass. Communicate your expectations and objectives with both students and parents. Be flexible and plan for those potential roadblocks. Remember to make it work for you. You want the students to get from point A to point B, but no two classrooms are exactly alike. Do what's best for your students and don't give up. Keep your goal in mind. You are doing this for your students and their continued success. If you have questions or want more information, please don't hesitate to contact me. I've listed my contact information as well as the websites I referenced during the presentation.